In this video, you will learn about my experience using Ghost CMS in the past nine months. And as surprising as it sounds, I chose Ghost because it looked great and had some limitations. But why do I like these limitations? The answer later in the video. Hi, my name is Tiago and I talk about technology for blogs and newsletters. Let's dive into it. First, I will tell you the backstory. If you want to jump the backstory, use the chapters on YouTube. At the end of 2020, I wanted to start a blog and I picked WordPress because it was convenient. I have used WordPress at work before, built websites with it, and was the only CMS I have used since 2018. But then I spent the next three months fighting with teams and plugins to make a great website. At the end of the three months, I had a slow and ugly website with one crappy article. So I was dreading thinking about opening the website and then I decided to change. When I was ready to make a change, I decided the next tool will be different and not cause me anxiety. So my criteria was I wanted a tool that allowed me to focus on writing and not distract with design and managing the website. I wanted it to be fast and I wanted it to have good SEO features. When I was looking, I saw that Ghost CMS released version 4. The best part was that they dropped the price from $29 per month to $9 per month and I had to check it out. This now brings me to talk about the positives of Ghost. Since I started using Ghost, there have been a lot of positives and the last 9 months have been great. That's what I'll focus on in this section. As a warning, if it looks like that I spend more time talking about the struggles on Ghost in the next section than I spend talking about the positives in this one, that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy Ghost. I do enjoy Ghost. Things are simple, smooth and working well, but the nagging parts are more present in my memory when I'm recording this video. The first positive of Ghost is the website speed. I never had to spend one second improving the speed of my website or thinking about reducing the number of plugins. Ghost is fast and remains fast after 9 months, simple as that. Then I picked Manage Hosting for my Ghost website to outsource responsibilities like updates, backups and security. This means I never have to worry with any of this. Instead, if I have a problem, I contact customer support from my hosting company. They are great and reply fast to the tickets. Check the link in the description if you want to use the same hosting. Next comes the editor of Ghost. It's amazing and the best text editor of any CMS I have used so far. It has many features and the Ghost team keeps adding more cards to make it even more complete. The only things I can think of to improve it is an email capture card, improving the buttons and version history for posts. The next thing I like is the absence of plugins. This means that there are no complications with performance or security. I struggled a lot with plugins on WordPress, so I am happy that Ghost uses integrations as they are usually less complicated. Like everything in life, it's not all roses with Ghost. There are also some struggles. The first thing that comes to my mind as a struggle on Ghost is the lack of a welcome email to new members. Email automation is hard to implement from what I've read, and I think Ghost being open source makes developing this even harder. But to be fair, Ghost is not an email service provider or an email marketing platform. Instead, Ghost is a content publishing platform. A good publishing platform. But it sucks to not have a way to send welcome emails to your subscribers. Fortunately, this might change soon as MemberKit aims to fix this problem. Check it in the description. As I just said, Ghost isn't an email service provider. You can use it as one, but that doesn't mean it will be a strong solution. For example, I've been using Ghost for my newsletter since around November and I can say it's ok for sending a simple newsletter, but it doesn't come close to a fully fledged solution like ConvertKit. Ghost lacks click tracking and email sequences, but it's not their core competence. Having that said, I'm considering using other tool for my newsletter if I ever feel the need to have a good email service provider. Ghost has lots of themes and some look stunning, but I am so picky that I still haven't found a theme to fit my requirements. Some of the requirements are a static homepage, pagination on the blog, a footer with three columns, templates for content hubs, tables of contents on posts, search enabled on the menu. By static homepage, I mean a hero section at the top with a headline, three to six featured posts, some text about the site and then six recent articles at the bottom. Most of the teams have some of these things, but none has all of them. I know it's possible to do all of this with code, but I don't know how to do it. So I will have to wait until I have the money and pay someone to build this team for me. 
Ghost has a small team, and this isn't a criticism, it's an acknowledgement. I'm not saying that if you become a Ghost Pro customer, you'll get bad service. What I am saying is that because Ghost Foundation is a non-profit company, they have limited resources. We love open source software, but sometimes we forget this can bring limitations like in this case. Because of these limited resources, the Ghost team prioritizes essential things over nice to have or less important things. One example I can think of is two-factor authentication. This important feature was first requested in April 2018 and still haven't been released. But two-factor authentication is only the 11th most requested feature on the list. So if you want to support the Ghost Foundation, the best way is to become a Ghost Pro customer, donate on GitHub or Open Collective. The last struggle I would like to address is that most online content about Ghost is geared towards developers. This reinforces the myth that you need to be a developer to use Ghost. I think this is because the community on the Ghost forum and Reddit are mostly developers and people self-hosting. There aren't many tutorials about Ghost CMS, and the ones that exist can be confusing for non-technical users. Not everyone wants to manage a website and even more people don't even know how to open the command line. So self-hosting is is not the only solution and path, there are other options. Look at my example, I always used WordPress self-hosting because that was the way I was recommended, but now that I know how good managed hosting is, I don't want to go back to self-hosting. And I see a lot of people struggling on forums with tools like WordPress because they don't have the know-how to self-host. And I know how that sucks because I was in their shoes nine months ago. This lack of knowledge about Ghost CMS is one of my main motivations to create these type of videos and articles to educate people about Ghost. I want to spread the love about this great tool and help make blogging more enjoyable to a lot of people. So John and the team at Ghost, if you watch this, Ghost will benefit from more educational content for non-technical users. Also, I want to say that the Ghost community is very friendly and helpful, but it's a small community. I believe that Ghost has the potential to be a bigger and stronger community because Ghost is a great tool. So how do I rate my experience of using Ghost over the last nine months? A 9 out of 10. Ghost has great features and I love to use it, but it also has some limitations. But I knew them initially and I don't consider them negatives. For example, even if I complain that I need to change codes to make team customizations, that's not a problem. On the contrary, that helps me to keep the focus and keep my over-optimizing bug under control. I also knew that Ghost don't have plugins. But that's not a problem, I consider integrations a superior option. But the thing I would like to have changed is tutorials. Most online content is geared towards self-hosting and developers. So if there were other types of content for non-technical people, that would have helped me. My future plans include getting a custom team to realize my vision while benefiting from using Ghost. To finish, let me tell you that I 1000% recommend using managed hosting. I cannot overstate how peaceful it is to run a website in this way. Even if you hear that managed hosting is risky because you don't have access to the files, most people that say it are developers that want to do customizations for their specific use cases. And let me tell you that you rarely need access to all the files to make customizations on Ghost. So you have to think about the trade-off between having to do all the maintenance and having access to those files to make small customizations. Having that said, do I regret moving from WordPress to Ghost? No, not even a bit. WordPress has its uses, but it's a hassle for the type of project I want to build. So. If it was today, I would use Ghost again without any hesitation. If you've enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel. My name is Tiago and this is a Stack Junction. Thanks for watching until the end.